Hey folks, good morning, welcome, Big Jet TV, you are live on Sunday, and we're on 27, Le right or right, folks? <laughs> Just whatever. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, it's, uh, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit, a bit of a bumpy descent. Okay, here we go then. Hey look! Off to hell. It's a shame I'm not flying on the 350 next week, isn't it? But there you go, it is what it is. Bit of work being done on that. Uh... Oh, that's a positioning flight, is it? Oh. I remember speaking to the fella who, uh, who owns the company that that um, that uh, makes those um, that uh, access apparatus. Little, uh, little inspection there. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Peak hole seven. Got a little bit. Well, we did have. I mean. It's 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 interesting, isn't it? I mean, it, it, we're all aware that you know you could be standing in one place and the, and the wind's not even blowing at all, like it is right now. Um, and yet, um, looks like we're getting quite a, a, a steady amount of shed effect hitting these jets as they uh, are into their last sort of like hundred or so feet, two hundred, hundred foot. BD 87 Daniel Skiethos Jet Blast Piercing. Watching Home Alone. Steph, good morning. It's Deborah Davies, Early Birdie. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're well. So, uh, interesting to see that uh, 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 Cafe Pacific, or should I say Cafe Cargo, have announced. Um, oh, start up. <laughs> you can see it happening, can't you? You can actually see it starting to happen, man. The oscillation going on now. Um, yeah, Cafe Pacific ordering. Um, was it uh, how many A350 freighters? Uh, not that the A350 is still under development, as Airbus is saying. Um, so uh, it's quite interesting, isn't it? I mean, the aircraft in general has been certified, um, but uh, but it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because um, you know, if you buy a if you buy an A321, for example, or, or just say, go with that. Listen to that. All the fun and affair. Nicely done. Very 
British. Um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because if you go and buy a a triple seven tomorrow, triple seven two hundred, and um, want to convert it into a freighter, uh, it doesn't need certification in terms of. Um, I'm not absolutely sure. I'm, I'm sure there is some kind of, you know, like building regulations, uh, some kind of thing like that that goes on with um, when you convert an aircraft into a freighter, because obviously you're, uh, you know, you're, you are reinforcing it in in in, in a lot of places, um, and that's all done um, under the guise under under the under the control of the uh, the conversion. Um, place itself um, there's some there's some pretty big ones out there Gavin Trampoline, a very warm welcome to you, my friend, as a brand new, well, no, as a returning member, my apologies. Gavin, good afternoon, uh, good morning, sorry. Caroline Teague has gifted 10 memberships. Yeah, um, what, what I'm saying is that, you know, um, in terms of, you know, a, a, a new aircraft, it, you know, the A350 freighter, uh, albeit a, uh, a, a new aircraft, really, in the freighter world, um, but, um, you know, in terms of its certification, because they still say it's under development, isn't it? They haven't actually started making the aircraft yet, as far as I'm aware, anyway. Uh, Pico 7, there is regulation. Yeah, yeah, there will be regulation on what... Um, well, the way, not just what you use, but the way that an aircraft is uh, converted into a freighter. <clears throat> You have to follow certain guidelines and uh, I've just had a rain up coming notification, you don't say. season haven't they in Sydney um, already uh, 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 um, temperatures of 44 degrees um, so you know um, some crazy weather ha happening down there um, New South Wales um, anyway uh, Gary Lyon cafe 350 will look stunning in the um, in uh, sorry the 350 will look stunning in the cafe livery well <coughs> the freighter um well uh, no different than the uh than the passenger jet obviously um other than the fact that i'd imagine i believe that uh are they are they uh, um um manufacturing the aircraft with with is it is, is something new actually is this going to be the first carbon um uh, freighter jet I think it is, isn't it? Um, all carbon fuselage freighter jets. So they'll obviously uh, not need to um, to, uh, to to cut the windows out, obviously, other than the, uh, the, the the required, the necessary windows that they have to have um, in the doors and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, really interesting that um, I think that will be the first carbon uh, freighter aircraft. Uh, Tom Coogan 
So cafe 747 dash out due in three hours and 42 minutes. Dean Baker, welcome back, Dean. You right, mate? Okay. How's it going? From Wales? Yeah. Nice one, fella. Picked a nice day for it. Um, I ain't got any stickers on me, man. Oh, I think they know what it is. Huh? We're, we're doing subscribe to your channel anyway. Okay, well, send, send one into the... Nice one, mate. Have a good day, yeah? This is the most famous van other than the 18 van. <laughs> most famous van other than the 18 van. All the way from Wales. Thanks, fellas. Here we go, 767. Oh, bless him. He's bought the ball. Wow. Flip in it. Listen to that. Easy. Nailed it. Late on the reverses. Fishing with Mr. W. A set of Trent Nine screaming so much. Well, I have got stickers, but they're in the van. They're down the bottom, and I've got my big gloves on. If he's still around after the show, I'll. Uh, but he said he's a member anyway, so uh, good lad. Um, yeah. So getting back to the whole freighter thing, um, it's um. Most definitely the first carb, all carbon, well not all carbon, but well yeah, all carbon freighter. Will they be manufactured, maybe that's why it's um, uh, um, going through, still going through certification, is that the aircraft is, is gonna be manufactured without windows, I'm guessing. Kind of pointless putting them in, isn't it? But is there a capability of producing it without the windows? Long landing. Oh, wow. Wow. That pilot's got some finesse. That is smooth indeed. Dean Baker, welcome back, Dean. Am I seeing, uh, did I just catch a, a little glimpse there? I did, didn't I? Okay, so, okay, we do have, got anything happening, Jilly? Um, we've got blues and the um, sirens going, but this geese is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> okay, they're going over there. Right, okay, what's going on? What's happening here then? Rachel Fanzella roasting hot in Sydney. Yeah, yeah, not um, not too good, is it? Really? Well, we've got we've got a lot of units that are uh, <coughs> excuse me attending. Got another of uh, three. Um, this geese is in a bleeding hurry and all. Look at this.
virgin chip. Is that that virgin chip? Just pushed back. They have not just pushed back from gate with that aircraft. That must have. That must be on tow or something, because they don't park there, obviously. What do you mean from right around? Oh, was he? Oh, was he? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So um, <clears throat> I think the crisis has been averted. I think it's just a cautionary check, maybe. You can see the, um, the governor there obviously doing a visual inspection. Um, pilot possibly uh, asking to have a visual inspection made of the... Welcome back, Finn. Alam, other than converted company made freighters usually have a strengthened primary structure that is more strengthened than passenger variants. Yes, indeed. Uh, I've seen the um, I've seen the um, the structure. Um, it's quite clear actually. There's a, there's a there's a very um, uh, is it EFM? I think one of the major um, uh, conversion houses that um, that are regularly posting. Uh, but when they um, in fact, the last post that I saw, um, uh, uh, last week I think it was, what was the airline that that, um, that was flying out of Manchester that retired with the with the grey and yellow? Who was that? Thomas Cook, yeah. Uh, a Thomas Cook A330 that was being converted by EFW. And um, you could clearly see uh, where the um, where the strengthening, um, you know, the, the floor strengthening, mainly the floor strengthening um, uh, around the fuselage, especially around the door area. But there are forward sections as well. Uh, quite clear because they've left the uh, they left the livery on the aircraft, but um, have. Um, can see that quite clearly oxidized um, sections uh, ribs of, of, of um, line is going off in it oh oh okay 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 Yeah, like for instance on the A321 um, freighter, the uh, the door is at the front, forward of the wing, 
Um, whereas on these bigger jets, the, 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 the freight, the main cargo deck door is obviously in the, at the back of the aircraft. All the, um, all the, all the um, main um, belly freight cargo access doors are, um, are the same. Um, but obviously, again, floor strengthening. What's that? going on yeah so anyway obviously um, with the carbon fuselage um, we're talking about a completely different beast in terms of you know uh, the strengthening the rib sections on an alloy um, uh, jet um, is, is relatively straightforward in terms of you cannot convert an A350 passenger jet to an A350 freighter it has to be built so um, so the so, so the obviously uh, when they when they are manufacturing uh, the, um, the the 350 freighter there will be an alloy surround complete alloy surround I'd imagine uh, I'd imagine that the cargo door itself will probably be alloy, I don't know, but um, I, I'm, I'm kind of assuming that it would be. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's uh, an interesting, I, I'd imagine that's why it's still going through its phases of being, um, of being uh, a certified, so to speak. That little panel there folks the uh, blue panel that you see which is uh, obviously off one of their new jets um, interestingly enough uh, that's the um, the uh, the overwing slide or uh, well yeah it is overwing slide uh, evacuation slide uh, that whole um, part has to be uh, serviced just like any other part on the aircraft and so um, and they have to test the slide as well so the whole thing has to come out and the, the panel has to be sent off for servicing um, and uh, that's why you see from time to time these uh, 320s with their um, with their uh, access slide with their um, emergency slide access panel which I believe when you pull the um, the lever inside it, it automatically um, deploys the slide. Still going. vehicles around there. I don't know why the police are involved, to be honest. Um, can't, can't understand that. 
Um, couple of um, um, fire units in attendance. This guy looks very high. That's what I thought mate. That's what I thought it was being to it was being towed from remote stand over here opposite me. Was it? Are you sure? No man. Really? Because that's see where I'm looking here right next to that that, that, that cafe jet, yeah, Jilly. Or around here. This is where they park them on remote stands with Virgin Atlantic. I think that's... But why it's going around that way, I don't know. Okay, stand by. Let me have a look. Yeah, let me have a look. Safe. Just wipe this. Dry your eyes, mate. Oh yeah, it's gone off radar now. Oh, is it? They've got a, they got a tow, they got a... Now that's interesting. So, it, was it on tow? No. I mean, they're sending them today, man. I need to see the track of that aircraft because, yeah, but hold on a minute, yeah, but, but, but what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying is that it's, it's not come from a gate right opposite me, no, it's come from all the way down at T3, yeah? Right, that's a remote stand, Julie, that's a remote stand, okay, so that's come, has come from its death, from its, uh, from its, Come from, it's come from a remote stand, but my question is, is why is it being towed that way? Um, but there we go. Right, I'm there now today, mate. Slinger going out. Yeah! Wow, man! 
CPR1234, next arrival to Earth, Eurowings A320 Neo uh, from Dusseldorf. Obviously, a uh, some kind of a technical issue. Obviously, obviously the engines weren't running, so it's it's not a sort of like you know fuel related or anything like that. I wouldn't imagine. Uh, although it's interesting that uh, you know APU's not running or anything like that because everything's been shut down on that aircraft. I was mentioning about the dog on the runway. I'm hearing that. How the hell did a dog get on the runway, man?
one whether perhaps the reason why they're using that 777 is because there's possibly um, a, 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 one of their 767s is out of service or have they put the 777-200 on the route? Because most of the time, as we are aware, it's... Um, oh, listen to this thing spooling up, mate. over those sheds. Phone him, man. Island Life tuning in from New Zealand. Good day. Honestly, honestly, how do they even find their way here? Bloke standing on the roof of a van in the middle of the flipping car park and he's driven right past me. Just can't make it up. Can't make it up. Cannot make it up. Obviously you can't hear a bleeding thing I'm saying because he's got his helmet on, which is understandable, but... This is what I'm flying on. Here he comes again, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. See how long it takes him to figure it out. Well, 
Okay. I'm waving, I'm waving my hand, I'm waving, I'm waving. Unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. Oi! 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 Jiminy Cricket! You got coffee, yeah? What's the instructions on your phone, mate? What's the instructions on your phone? Sorry folks. <laughs> the bloke was sitting over the other side. Are, are you there, Jilly? Are you there, Jilly? Yeah. <laughs> the geezer was the geezer was the geezer was sitting over there on the phone. And he was just looking at me. Sat there looking at me. I'm like, hello! <laughs> I mean, bless him. He said, I don't understand English. I'm like, well, you know. He was driving past the hotel and looking into the hotel. He wasn't looking in the parking lot. I mean, I mean, bless him and fair play to him for doing a job and all that kind of thing. But honestly, man, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. There you go, there you go. He's doing a job and he's, uh, you know, doing his best. It's not every day you get asked to deliver a coffee at a hotel, a parking lot, with a bloke standing on the top of a roof of a van. But there you go. He didn't know, the reason why he didn't know where to deliver it is because he couldn't understand where to deliver it. That's the problem. Anyway, there we go. Oh well, we've got, we've got it anyway. There's only a cup of coffee, flipping it. All that for a cup of coffee. And a brownie, sorry, yeah, thanks. Oh, la 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 la. Okay. It's another United Triple. It isn't all, look at that. Be honest with you though, mate. I mean, in all fairness, you wouldn't go to a foreign country and be an Uber delivery driver, would you? If, if your if your job involved understanding the 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 the, 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 the country's language fully, would you? Um, you'd maybe do something else, which is a little bit more sort of like 
and get into it, understand, learn the language, and then do something like that. I don't know, um, but that's just the way I do it. Give him a tip, Jilly. Is it too late to give him a tip? Bless his cotton socks. to be approaching faster maybe five knots faster I don't know it's that done five knots doesn't sound a lot but you see now that's that's coming out of the LFB isn't it these boys here and girls mate there's definitely something going on Jilly there's nothing squawking is there Yeah, man. They're uh, they're coming out the they're, they're, they're coming into the crash gate. There got caught by gust of wind from the uh, from the sheds. down there as well now Billy it's all go today <laughs> it's all go today hello what's going on here okay 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 Leonard.
Yorkshire biker. KLM 747 looks to be uh, stable. Not even near a Cat One, are they? At the moment. radar so far. Steph, only one fire truck. Only one fire truck. So, no, Steph, there's more than one fire truck. Um, in fact, they're all lined up down by the crash gate. Um, and they're actually going in now. And that's actually a, uh, I think there's a, um, I think there's a, an ambulance in amongst it as well. Yeah, there's a couple of ambulances. Yeah, there's uh, quite a few emergency vehicles. I think that um, sign is blocking out the worst of it. Ian coming. Welcome back Ian. With his gold star. Circumstances, whatever they might be, even if it's a, a minor issue, they, they will sometimes use it for training. Um, but um, well, that Virgin 350 finally making it round look. <laughs>
reason I don't think it's a it's 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 a training exercise is because of that guy being there um, at the runway's edge. Uh, that's that's what sort of like leads me to think that it is something more than an exercise. And also, um, the other thing is that don't they normally just uh, flash the orange uh, lights when the uh, when it's a training exercise? Another United Trips have two up. Flipping heck! Big Sigh, welcome back, Big Sigh. We're hearing Martin Ackerman saying that apparently uh, aircraft in the hold are being told that they will be landing 2-7 left. Um, so we do have an aircraft that is, uh, there is an emergency of some description. I don't know what it is, but um, but it's not squawking at this stage, which is, uh, which is a little bit interesting. So we don't know whether it's medical or or technically related. Um, yeah. So keep an eye out, folks. This is looking pretty interesting. And of course, um, okay, well, Jill is thinking that it's either the uh, Etihad 380 or an American triple. Got another, uh, oh, another um, approach say welcome back Ian oh. yes 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 we've tried the coffee made it machine idea for the van folks trust me we went through all of that um, and it basically means you'd have to have all the rig up like a uh, like a like a well that would have to come from the pilot which would go through to ATC which would then be released to someone who then releases it to the general public. So it looks like the American triple, folks. That means the Etihad 380 is going to go in on the run one, other runway in it. Folks, so um, we believe it is an American Triple Seven, which uh, might be those bleeding Pratt and Whitney's playing up again. You never know. Hire your own barista. <laughs> Johnny was a barista, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, Gary Lyle, I'm starting to wonder if United are starting to retire their 767 seeds a lot of 7 triple sevens. Well, I've got to be honest with you, um, Gary, um, a lot of these triple seven two hundreds are, are, are quite long in the tooth as well. Old Pratt & Whitney PW4000. Uh, anybody out there care to sort of like uh, elaborate on the age of the 767 fleet versus the triple seven fleet? I don't know. Um, but I know they have obviously been having... Uh, quite a lot of issues with their um, with their Pratt and Whitney shod um, 767s. Uh, the PW4000, of course, uh, did suffer. Are they GEs? Are they? Oh, it's a 300, is it? Oh, okay, sorry. They're, they're 200s of Pratt and Whitney's PW4000s, aren't they? So yeah, yeah. So it's a triple seven 300 ER. Interesting. Okay.
Jules Harris, Mark Bailey. <laughs> they don't write. Remember what's that? Had a very interesting, um, oh, start up. That's a uh, tie, triple seven in it. Seven second out. ES watching Big Jet TV at London Heathrow. Arthur AA56 now with Tower. So he's um, he's in control of he the Tower are in control of him. He has. Um, they're bringing him in. Then Nick Woodward, nine of the nine of the top ten Heathrow uh, uh, flight radar track jets are uh, Heathrow. Jets inbound for Heathrow. That's got to be cat, cat one now, isn't it? At least. Oh, easy, Sam. Goes in. Okay, this one in from Miami. Okay, American 56. 
currently the most tracked aircraft on Flight Radar 24. Here we go, here she comes. So, runway in sight. He was all. It looked like he was a bit tentative to. Uh Runway inspection, obviously. Um, make sure there's no bits and bobs falling off of it. I mean, the thing is that, that you know, if there's an issue with a tyre, so to speak, it would be, it would show up as a. Um, as a pressure issue that, that one of the tyres had possibly deflated. Um. Vacated the runway. not good because you that's probably why it was a little bit tentative with uh, with touching it down heavy you wanted to bring it down as smooth as possible now the thing is that that aircraft is due to come up this end of the airfield so they'll go uh, carry out a visual inspection now of the aircraft to see if it's oh really Front gear was not showing us locked down. Wow, that's a bit scary, isn't it? Well, we'll just have to see what uh, what transpires with that. Right, mate. <laughs> see ya. Visual inspection being carried out now. Yeah. 156 knots, uh, saying uh, on approach. That's fast, isn't it? That's a very fast approach. Well, uh, either of those issues would have come up on the um, up on the panel uh, as a as a, uh, a, 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 a tire pressure issue. It may have been a um, a faulty uh, sensor. You know, you never know. Um, but obviously, if you have a deflated tire that's rotating at somewhere around about the 2000 RPM mark um, that's not favourable because that obviously then 
uh, then we'll start to not delaminate per se, but uh, the, um, uh, the 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 tyre itself will, um, you know, the the uh, it will deform, and and then potentially. Certainly sounds like there was a, a, a deflated. It's also also it's a bit like in America when there's a when there's a medical crisis, um, they generally send out everyone. The fire, uh, uh, who are the fire teams are also uh, medically trained as well in the United States. So um, it kind of makes sense. That, um, that they will they will that they will send out most of the um, uh, um, uh, emergency services whether it's for an exercise or uh, or you know because other than that they're sitting there in the in the station twilling their thumbs really uh, waiting for something to happen and so uh, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to utilize it as an exercise so whether they're actually there for any particular purpose um, it's it's you know it's you know, ambulances, for example, um, obviously, like like Ginny was just saying, you know, if, if, if that aircraft had have slewed off the runway and, uh, and, and, and 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 the gear collapsed or whatever it might have been, then obviously you would need all the medical emergency uh, uh, and then all the uh, emergency services. Uh, they are still uh, attending the aircraft. The aircraft is still. Okay, so apparently uh, Arthur saying that the uh, apparently one of the tyres is confirmed as having deflated. Um, but it's, did that, none of that was apparent, was it? When we, obviously, when you think about it, also uh, when they apply the brakes, that wheel, uh, that whole wheel assembly, is going to lock. Um, because it's obviously not rotating, it's just going to stop. And um, I'll be honest with you, they're probably quite um, grateful for the fact that it's raining, that it's a wet surface, and that it's not a, a completely dry surface. Uh, not that it makes a huge amount of difference uh, in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of the because of the speeds that they're travelling at. But um, when you look at the, when you consider. Uh, the water is going to uh, act in some ways to to cooling the uh, the, the, the rubber um, and um, and reducing the um, they're starting to pull away now. Now I think they're either going to hook that aircraft up, still landing on two seven left. How long is that going to go on for? I wonder. No, I think it's actually because the aircraft touched down almost opposite. So the t t so the natural thing is for the rubber to the the, the, the tire smoke to, to carry across towards me. Okay, we have normal operations resuming, folks. Uh, whether they're going to hook that jet up and bring her up to the gate, I can't imagine they're going to uh, they're going to take her anywhere else. Smoky start for the number one. Pratt and Whitney engine on that 767. Of course, I was talking about um, American when I was thinking United. I do that quite regularly tonight. <laughs> Pratt and Whitney's uh, all of American's uh, uh, 777 300 fleet. I don't think. Um, I think they're. I think they're. Um, I think they're American's 777 200 fleet are also uh, General Electric powered. Um, uh, sorry, they're Rolls Royce, aren't they? They're Rolls Royce uh, Trent um, 800s. Whereas uh, United's 777 fleet are 200 variants are powered by the Pratt Whitney PW4000. 300 variant is powered by the uh, General Electric GE90115, I think it is. It might be, might even be a 90, um, a 96 or something like that. But uh, the taxi lights are still on.
so they're moving up. They're moving up. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. Now, I, 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 well, they actually might tow her to a, a remote gate as opposed to a, uh, bringing her up here. Let's just have a look and see what they do with her. So they are following her. And they are, she's on her, under her own steam as well, so uh, she's going in the gate there. So you know what um, cabin crew would have probably alerted the passengers. I would imagine, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say that the uh, there's a chance that the great he stops there because then we'll see them actually um, inspecting and possibly changing that that assembly over. The, uh, the, the, the reason why the uh, emergency units are still there will be because that brake will be the, 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 the system. I don't think they can isolate the brakes as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, um, like in a car where you can control the bias, the front to the back, in terms of the braking power. Um, wow, that's a big gust of wind there. Um, the, uh, the brake system will still be very hot indeed so they will be um, quick to they will be standing by just in case when the aircraft comes to a stop it's normally when the um, when the heat will sort of like start to um, to build up so to speak because um, Loving the A350. Okay, so they are definitely um, It's definitely that um, starboard side, isn't it? Is it the starboard wheel set? Kinda looks like it.
it's looking nice, definitely a starboard set in it. Peter Fly is a brand new member. Welcome, Peter Fly. I guess he flies. So yeah, like I say, would the um, there wouldn't have been a um, there wouldn't have been a sort of like brace brace um, uh, um, um, call out from the cabin crew, would there? Would it would it would it would it get that bad? I don't think so. Um, just be aware, you know. But then again, I don't know, you know. You see, if there is a if there is an issue, it's a bit late to call it, isn't it? It's a little bit, bit, little bit late to call it, isn't it? With um, you know the brace, brace. You, you'd need to just make the make the uh, make the passengers as aware as you possibly can, I guess. Sarah Ford has gifted a membership. Thank you, Sarah. You right, mate? Yeah. How was the car? Was it careful? Oh right, yeah, cool, man. <laughs> yeah. go folks anybody want it November 7 to, to Alpha November um, so we're hearing that it was a uh, a deflated tire now um, they will you know they will obviously inspect the aircraft but if the tire has remained intact which by the looks of it it has because I'll be honest with you if that air, if the tire had of um, um, you know delaminated or if, if it had of um, you know, uh, uh, deformed and, and, and sort of like uh, ripped apart on touchdown or on, on rollout, then um, then they would have obviously been concerned about flying debris, um, hitting maybe some of the control surfaces, the flight control surfaces, and other uh, wing, under wing components, maybe even, uh, you know, Because at 2,000 RPM, those things are spinning pretty fast and um, can do some serious damage. But luckily, by the looks of it, um, it's not too much of an issue. And they will have a maintenance truck out there and a, a spare wheel slash tyre assembly, um, probably entire brake assembly as well, I'd imagine. Unless, of course, you know, they might still be able to may leave that brake assembly on there. It may just literally be um, because the the, 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 the the assembly, the tyre slash wheel assembly, um, is is not like your normal car. It's more like a more like a truck, really, where the whole um, you know, the, or, 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 or a on some uh, like earth moving equipment and things like that, where they have uh, you know the entire uh, assembly comes off as one unit. And then that gets shipped off, and then then the tire is um, removed from the uh, from the rim.
Claire Bear, 380 on finals. Nigel Gale, Qatar, 380 uh, in after the BA triple seven. Thank you, folks. Miserable conditions here at London Heathrow. But you know what? If it's miserable, it's usually quite exciting. It's just this, uh, you know, with my big, I've got these massive, great big gloves, which is, uh, you know, difficult to do things with. <coughs> Especially when it goes all Kate Bush on me. How could you leave me when I needed you? Uh, Simon Lease, yes they are, split rims, indeed they are. Um, so when they um, when they take the uh, the assembly off, the wheel itself is a, is one complete unit. Um, when they change the wheel, when they change the tyre um, at um, or a brake assembly at the airport on the ground, uh, the entire wheel slash well, you know the whole rim and tyre assembly as one unit will uh, will be removed uh, then put on what is best described as a um, as a trolley and then um, that's wheeled off or put aside the brake assembly is slid off new one put on and then the wheel assembly is literally slid back on for people to come and pick them up. Oh. Lance D. Qatar understands what the reverses are for. Certainly do. Oh, good old 330 CEO. There we go. Peace landing. Peace landing. Yeah, here we go. Peace landing. Oh, peace landing. Total butter on it. Steve Batty, yeah, tube is still running. There we go. And to be honest with you, most 
people coming to Heathrow by public transport either use the bus or the tube, it has to be said. Um, there's an overland tube that goes into the underground, of course, uh, into Hatton Cross. So, when he says all train services, mind you, maybe an overhead power line from the... Um, in the over in the over in the overpass section of the tube, I don't know. So I don't think there is a. Um... Yeah. I think there is a train service that runs to Heathrow. Is it like a like a normal sort of like you know like British Rail type? Uh, services there. I think there is. Batty Jerry, it's just the Lizzie line and Heathrow Express. They had a power line problem the other day, right? Thames link to Gatwick, but not Heathrow. Yeah, there's a uh, normal sort of light out of Victoria, isn't it? Gatwick Express. That's all. Oh, okay, Sue Freeman, just the overground using the tube into Paddington. There we go, so it is the overground tube um, segment. Tony said it's the tube that goes to Freddy. You still hear me, Jim? Did it? Certainly looked like it. Viscount Mitch. When I used to come plane spotting at Heathrow, I got off the train at the end of the line of pounds low west and had to get a green bus into the airport. Well, oh, hey, they were the day's green bus, eh? Hey! Thank you, 
also gifting a membership. Speed tape, temporary uh, ceiling around the uh, nose ray dome of that jet. folks because uh, I've got my uh, phone screen covered in water and my glasses covered in water so it's not a great combination at the moment uh, I'm trying to do my best I apologize if I'm not reading a lot of comments out It's a form of duct tape, but it's a, but it's a very, yeah, it's a very expensive um, form of duct tape, which is, um, you know, um, it's metallic to start with, and uh, yeah, it costs a hell of a lot more than your average um, uh, reel of duct tape that you buy from B and Q. <laughs> you can't buy it down B and Q, but uh, well, you can buy it in uh, motor stores, I believe. Oh! Go on, Sam, get it down, get it down. You can buy it at, uh, you know, at uh, motor factors. Oh, where is it? We can do that, though, can't we? I just lie on the floor. Not do what Peter Griffin did.
Yeah, Sarah Lancaster uh, and everybody else. Um, for all members next week, all our members, um, premium, first and super class members, I'm going to be in Finland next week, folks. I've got a return ticket to hell. Um, which is going to be, uh, we believe it's going to be, uh, uh, well, it's snow conditions out there at the moment. We've got a pretty decent position, um, which we've uh, done our research and um, looked into it, and it seems that uh, we've got the right position. There are 15 positions, apparently, I believe, at, uh, at, um, at Helsinki, but uh, there is one particular position which is quite close to the de-icing pad as well. Turn on point for runway, is it 3-4, Julian? Something like 3-4 or something. So yeah, next Wednesday, folks, uh, if you want to join us, we'll, uh, we'll be in Helsinki. Hazel Sally May has gifted a membership. Thank you, Hazel. Uh, Joe Thompson sounds a good show, and I'm off on Wednesday. There we go. Uh, him, he, me, dreamliner. Uh, uh, Kev Bond, yes, I will be disappearing into thin air. won't be on board one of their 350s or 330s but we will see enough of them out there I believe I hope along with other traffic but also um, very close by to the de-icing pad we'll obviously put a notification out folks um, we will do one hour's free view but it will be a very strict one hour's free view um, just from the point of view of the day so flipping short but um, bear in mind also that I arrive in time on Tuesday I will be going and doing a recce uh, and all being well I might be able to get this get ourselves we'd be able to get ourselves a, 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 a show a short show took delivery of, the, uh, of, of their first Max 8 last week, as far as I'm aware. It's, it's ironic that, you know, we come back from Seattle, from Boeing Field and Painfield, and all of a sudden they start tweeting stuff about everything that we saw. You know, that um, the, um, the United uh, Ecojet, the, um, the 737 Max Ecojet with the uh, DC-8 sniffer, the NASA DC-8 sniffer jet, um, which went to, which was quite interesting actually. Um, when I read up on it, it was, it was, it was more about the contrails than it was the, than the. I, I, I think somehow they got it. Like they might have got it a bit mixed up, um, because obviously you know, with or without um, you know s sustainable aviation fuel, you're still going to get contrails because it is condensation isn't it it's um it's, it's not going to make any difference oh the only thing that's going to be different is the um is the actual emissions uh, in those contracts uh sebasti sippy is a new member welcome sebasti i think that's right you can just about read my uh, read my comments at the moment gonna be joining us in hell next week
Sachen. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff W is a new member. Welcome, Jeff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I'm flying in the new Airbus um, A3 Hellcart. So I'm going to. Uh, no, the L A3 Handcart. I should have. I I'll get it. I I'll Sorry. So new that I, I got it wrong. The A3 Handcart. So I'm going to hell in a handcart. Is that right? Is that the right saying? No, it's a handcar. It's a handcar. It's never had a going ahead in a handcar. It's head in the handcar, I'm telling you. Never. Never heard that. Never heard the same hell in the hand basket. Never heard that before. It's hell in the handcar. I'm telling you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. Eddie Howard. O'Malley taxiing on Virgin. Uh, he said he was on. O'Malley is on a Virgin jet, is he? Okay, it's the first I've heard. Is that him there? Possibly lined up. What? What? What's the details on O'Malley's flight? Is he lined up? Is it? Is that him there lined up, GP? Okay, so in America it's a hand basket, in the UK it's a hand cart. <laughs> Judy Ward, welcome Judy. She's a new member. I don't even know what the um, what the expression is for, actually, to be honest with you. That would be a, a, a basket then, wouldn't it? That would be a basket. But then you would have thought that it would be the European side and not the... Because did they have the guillotine? Did they have the guillotine in America? I don't think they did or until... But maybe in some places, I don't know. But mainly it was French, wasn't it? Origina it originated in... in, in linked to a number of different um, uh, times and uh, oh well whatever Mark Hill yeah 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 that totally made sense yeah O'Malley probably can't see any departures uh, not at the moment, O'Malley. Only, only, obviously, anything that's passing us there, panning past us. 
Um, let me just get a little bit of uh, this screen cleared off if I can. So I've got, so I've still got quite a lot of water on there. Water residue. Mike's nice. Oh yeah, the other thing that was quite funny when we booked the flight to uh, to hell with um, with Finnair was it uh, it told us that we had contributed um, to sustainable aviation fuel and no it was was it was it two p or something like that yeah point yeah 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 twenty yeah yeah yeah. Like like twenty pence or something like that um, in in sustainable aviation fuel, which is quite sweet, isn't it? I like the way they've parked that right in the way that we can't see it. They seem to make, seem to do that quite often, don't they? A bit like the old Formula One um, when there's a problem with the car and they pull the pull the big um, the blinds down and uh, so. The cameras can't get to the thing. Always nice when it's a bit of a let up in the rain. Look out! You, you, you're not. You're probably. Are you seeing that on your screen as white, or are you seeing that in a sort of like a sandy, sort of like beigey finish on that um, Air India jet seven eight seven dash eight? Wow, one of the few. Seeing it very often, do we? Now? Blimey, yeah, that's a try of thin air jets. Look at that. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. Or has that already been? I don't know. 
Easy! lock on in it and then all of a sudden Shell or popcorn? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's interesting that you uh, you see that, whereas on my monitor it shows as being quite white. Robert Hilton, Steve Billings, H. David Canard. Is it the same guy that delivered your coffee? <laughs> No bus at all here, is there? Not a bus inside. Mark Stedman is a returning member. Welcome back, Mark. Welcome back to all our returning members. Uh, good to see you here. Always nice to see people returning. Um, makes me feel good because I know you well, really. Jack, I get up early just to watch you. Uh, you make my Sunday. Love you, Jack, uh, from Toronto in Canada. Thanks, Jack. Brian Owen Suffer 63. I've noticed that a few other aviation channels are doing Christmas. Get it down. Come on, come on. Hey. It's a bit like the old, uh, it's a bit like the old calendar, isn't it? You get a thousand of them printed up and you sell five. It's kind of pointless exercise, really. Joanna Bean, does anyone know what was going on with the Virgin jet earlier on? Um, well, uh, we don't really. Uh, we, we don't know if it was related to the um, to the tow vehicle or vehicle or what, but uh, certainly had a few um, emergency vehicles linked up there. Paul Skilling has gifted a membership. Thank you, Paul. Uh, 
um, Aidan Campbell, I shall track CX7 for you. She's currently in Hungary or over Hungary. Go for wipes in a second, folks. Stand by. To, um, if you want to, Jilly, do you want to pin the um, membership uh, thing? If you want to, uh, if you want to um, put yourself down for a gifted membership, folks, you can. Of course, uh, we have um, we have a significant number of um, organically grown um, members, um, many of whom, it has to be said. Uh, also um, were once gifted a membership but then went on to continue their membership and um, uh, you know pay it organically so to speak uh, whereas uh, if you if you find yourself a little bit short of money um, you can of course be uh, gifted a membership all you have to do is hit that link uh, that's at the top of the feed now and uh, just allow gifting is uh, all you need to do. That's all you need to do is, uh, and then your name will go forward. And it is random, by the way, folks. It's not something that we choose. It is a random um, YouTube. It's a bit like the lottery. And also, um, if you are lucky enough to be gifted a membership, then please do the decent and honourable thing by coming in and saying thank you to your gift or um, who has they have spent their hard-earned cash on uh, giving you membership. So it's always a nice thing to do, isn't it? Um, just to say uh, thank you. trouble is also um, those who are gifting please be aware that sometimes you gift somebody a membership and it's done in their absence uh, so they don't actually realize it until later on when they come on the stream or maybe the next show or whenever it is
don't feel in any way um, uh, uh, pressurised as well, folks. Uh, you know, um, it's, uh, it's, it's just something that is a wonderful thing that people do. But please don't feel that, um, you know, don't feel in any way sort of like pressurised to, to, to give membership. So, um, get people coming on oh I just noticed I got gifted a membership last week or something like that um, and uh, does it say it on the email we've got over to you as well oh, okay. some people just don't help you do that Yeah, of course, you know, as a member on Big Jet TV, it's not something I, I, I push very often, but just because I, you know, I, I, I want to leave it up to you. But as a member, uh, of course, your name comes up highlighted green. I read your comments out. You get to join us depending on, on your level of membership. Um, you get to join us overseas on European shows, on the uh, US shows and beyond. Intercontinental shows, I guess you would call them. Um, but then, even as a premium member, you still get to watch the uh, the, um, the the long the um, the long distance shows as well. A week after, uh, have you put the um, have you put the Boeing field in? All that large, I mean, Yeah, 
Flavink is a, a no-go, folks, for, uh, for, for spotting. It's absolutely miles away, out in the middle of flipping nowhere. You get to see nothing, um, no airport activity. Josh Owen. Welcome, Josh. He's a brand new member, Josh Owen. Uh, welcome to, uh, to Big Jet TV as a member. Um, of course, yes, we do um, utilize the membership fund for, uh, for, for traveling overseas. Um, other channels may take money from you, but what you get in return, I'm not quite sure. Um, it's not absolutely clear. Uh, we generally stick by the rules and do exactly what we're supposed to do um, and what we are very proud of doing as well and that is using your money to um, to, to prop up the business and get us overseas to um, to bring you the overseas shows at least one European show a month and one US show a month sometimes it sort of clashes or it um, it, uh, it, 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 it's at the very beginning of the month or, or it, it goes like for instance the last US show actually went from through November into December I actually spent my birthday on a plane <laughs> but, uh, that's what we're all about folks Josh Owen oh I gave Josh a, a shout out It's 100, 100, 100 days in, isn't it? Billy, will there be Christmas giveaways to members? We can't do that, Billy. We can't, we can't, we, that's not Christmas giveaway. No, I don't quite understand that, Billy, but... Um, James Dayton has gifted 10 memberships. Thanks, James. RD UK, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, at the end of the day, and the, 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 it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's the passion there. You've got, to have, you've got to have passion when you're doing any any kind of job. If you're doing any kind of job and you're, you're you know, you're, you're, you're putting everything into it, you've got to have passion. You've got to be 24-7, 365, you know, um, for the love of aviation, literally, is what it is all about for us. And of course, um, you know, I do honestly sometimes question um, uh, people's modus operandi in terms of, you know, what is their eventual um, goal in terms of you know their channel uh, whether it is just money um, you know obviously you know you need money if you're going to be running a business like we are but um, but what is the, the, the biggest satisfaction for, for me is not earnings is not financial it's more towards the fact that we have such a great community and what we do for the community and what 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 the community does for the community if you see what i mean um we've 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 um we've got some great relationships here on big jet tv uh, both through the industry uh, but also most importantly through the global aviation community but not just aviation as well people say to me so wow are all your members and your 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 followers are they all aviation fans and it's like well you know a lot of them are a lot of them are here because they find aviation fascinating now. Uh, they have maybe weren't so fascinated in aviation before they started watching the show. But, um, you know, uh, it's something that's grown on them. 
um, and it does it, it really does especially how interesting the aviation um, industry is in terms of you know from a technical standpoint some people are, are very very heavily into it like myself you know uh, whoa easy son Oh, that's brilliant, man. Who's that? Right, mate. Nice one, fella. <laughs> Someone watching it on his phone. Man. Crazy. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> well, there you go. Mark B. Treadline. Josh Owen. I love getting home from school and watching these. Awesome, Josh. That is brilliant, man. Uh, Mary Ann. Uh, oh, Mary Ann has changed her name from LA girl. Um, Mary Ann, uh, nice landing. Uh, Claire Bear has gifted a membership. Thank you, Claire. Um, good to see an A300, John Grinham. Billy. I love a picture of TV Canada. Well, yeah. And it's one of those things that we did experiment with in the past in terms of a calendar. Well, let's get some right old um, oscillation going on here. Flipping heck. I'm not feeling any of that wind. They bleeding all. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, James. That was crazy, man. That was crazy, wasn't it? So, of course, all of the gifted members today um, will, um, hopefully, we will, um, we will get you out to the US for the January show. Not sure where it's going to be yet at this stage, um, but... Um, Gifted membership is, is of course uh, first class membership, so we'll hopefully get you out to the US uh, before your free membership expires. Redtail 747s were Northwest Orient based out of Minneapolis, bought by Delta Dave Beeler. Yeah, I remember the old Northwest 747s. of uh, reverser action. section of the runway of course the um, you know that these runways are generally have a hump in the middle um, or a crown uh, I guess you call it would you call it a crown
with him, with his uh, United Triple Seven. Just Theo, been watching since 2018, he's just joined. Sorry it took me five years. That's all right. No problem at all, mate. <laughs> Party UK. Your members on here are amazing. Uh, so, many with so, so, uh, so many with so much aviation knowledge. Yeah, and so many who have gained aviation knowledge, like myself. You know, I'm always the first to admit um, that I have uh, learnt so much from um, from that, uh, from our uh, our very knowledgeable audience. Mark Peel claims land at the 1,000 foot mark of the safe. I think the um, I think the the, the uh, the keys, as they're commonly known, are at the, um, or is it, is it the keys right up the front and then the 1,000 foot marker, which is, uh, is, the, is the aiming point, really. It's the, it's, the, it's the ideal position. It's a bit like hitting, a, um, hitting the apex of a turn, you know, when you're going around a, a tight turn and you hit the apex perfectly, that makes the turn perfect. You hit the 1,000 foot marker, you bang on everything for your systems to be operating. Um, as they as you would want them to or as they would want to as well if you're a bit long then uh, things are a little bit out in terms of sequencing yeah drop that one it's great when you hear that uh, when you hear that um, where they literally pull up on the throttles or um, retard the throttles so to speak S zero one two three is a new member. Welcome, NGS. I've got all the gifted. Ronald with wings has gifted five memberships. Thank you, Ronald. That's very kind of you, my friend. Um, what have we got? Mutinous Mike has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Mike. Fat fingers. Rachel Fox has gifted five memberships. Anyone else I've missed? I think I've got those. Um, James Dayton, I think I've got James's 10 memberships. John Bolland has gifted a membership. Thanks, John. Looking out for the flaps to extend on this jet. Uh, also carrying out their um, full and free check. Um, elevators, then the rudder, uh, speed brakes on the wings, speed brakes check uh, slash 
um, ground spoilers. There's the elevators now being checked. So he's pushing and pulling the centre column up and down, or she, and then on the foot, on the feet, pushing, there we go, full up on the uh, elevators there. That's hard up on the elevators. Um, rudder check coming up. Back to the neutral position, left, and then the right. Split, uh, split rudder assembly on the uh, lower section is um, is just to uh, the uh, where's your speed brakes check for the uh, right side left side speed brake check coming up Flaps being extended now. Not as much flap for takeoff as there is on depart on arrival. Um, I don't know anything. Sort of five degrees maybe of flap for uh, for departure. Moving forward now. Chilly. <laughs> mutinous Mike again. Is that Mutinous Mike? Another five memberships, or is that just my 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 chat miles behind? Okay, I'm miles behind. Sorry, folks. Uh, Kooky Lord, A320 headed in British Airways. Jill Blakeney, you put the ribbons on that. Mark Todd's watching in Paris with a beer. Ha <laughs> ha, fair play, mate. Mais oui, you want another beer, sir? Are the smaller BA planes mostly flown by rookie pilots, Joanna V? No, uh, Joanna. In fact, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of pilots um, uh, prefer to use the short haul routes because it's, it's kind of an easier sort of like lifestyle, isn't it? It's a, it's a different lifestyle um, flying the short haul routes than it is flying the long haul routes. Obviously, because you're, um, you know, you're not stopping over. You're coming straight back. Yeah, they are. John Bollum, EK29, 12 minutes, Aiden Campbell, Kevo, 812, crosswinds at about 100 feet. I think you're right, Kevo. Um, well, I think uh, if you're new to us, Kevo, I've not seen you on here before, but maybe you've been watching for a while. But you see those big sheds, those big British Airways, uh, and that um, that's the United shed there that we're looking at, that XBA shed. Uh, the Virgin Atlantic shed. I don't know if that comes into it really, but certainly these big sheds here, when the wind whips over the top of them, you get what we call the shed effect, which catches them, at, yeah, around about 100 feet. There it is there, where it whips out over the top of the shed and uh, gives them a big handful of uh, crosswind um, shear almost, sometimes. But yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the, the um, 
short haul pilots are, are not young, not rookie. Um, in fact, I remember um, I remember flying with um, on a on a BA jet not that long ago, uh, and the uh, the pilot was actually um, blimey, they're putting those United jets out now, aren't they? Uh, the pilot, uh, the captain in the left hand seat was uh, was. Uh, um, an older gentleman, the first officer was uh, a lot younger and um, was planning to go on to the A350s. Uh, so it does really, it really does depend on the individual themselves whether they plan to uh, fly the long haul routes or, um, oh, is this guy gonna, oh, I thought he was gonna push. Come on, mate, push in front of us. Head on to us, that's what we want. Sam Path. N is a new member. Got some people down here saying hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Lovely to see people here. Dad's bringing their son in to watch the to watch the planes. There's a lot of us on here right now. Wow, look at this United Seven Eight Seven. Nice. Paul Malatrat has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Paul. That's very kind of you, my friend. Um, always a little bit, I always feel a little bit awkward when there's people standing around at the bottom of the van and they're waving at me and I'm filming and talking to you lot. Um, so uh, I do go out of my way to try and give them a, give them a wave and say hello and um, uh, give stickers away and things like that. But, uh, But it's lovely to see everyone here. Great to see the um, great to see the uh, the fans out and about, especially the dads with their sons and daughters, um, bringing them to the airport to dream about planes. Yvonne Evans, good afternoon to you. Aidan Campbell, gifting membership is random and best of luck. It is random, it's completely random, it is a bit of a lot. Here. Scott Hetherington, good afternoon. Mrs. JMD Wales, 85. Good afternoon, Penny Haskins. Um, yeah, talking about the. Uh, don't get me wrong. You, you I think, um, I think you have to um, rack up a certain amount of hours um, before you can fly on the uh, the bigger jets. I believe. I mean, in terms of in terms of uh, type rating, which is basically learning to be able to fly the uh, the bigger aeroplanes. Um, there's not a lot of difference in it. You know, you can go literally from an A319 to an A350 in, a, in as little as two weeks you can be type rated. And that, the crazy thing about that as well is that it can all be done on the simulator. You don't actually have to go through, um, you know, um, uh, flight training per se, like they used to back in the old days. Dave Edwards, sunny here in West Cornwall. Right there, Dave. David Edwards, that is, of course. Not Dave. Chris Clark. Uh, Josh Owen, 380 on approach. Thank you, Josh. saying my daughter Lindsay and son-in-law Sam's flight BA939 from Dusseldorf just joined the back of the stack. 
Gordon Freeman has just gifted a membership. Thank you, Gordon. Flaps are being extended now. Yeah, we had a very special um, visitor to Staines International uh, a couple of days ago. I did take a picture. Um, it was very brief. Um, just came in for a maintenance check. Um, I'll show you a picture of it in a little bit. Oh, no. I can unravel all this wetness. Yeah. You ready for this, folks? This was a uh a visitor, oh well, we're ready for the white screen. So, we enough right now. Um, okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Dry set of gloves. Aiden Campbell, Emirates three eighty, eleven minutes out. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody who's gifted memberships. Really appreciate it. for that man. Yeah, I don't don't worry folks, I've inv I've, I've um, informed all my mates and family that I'm going to be doing a show on Christmas Day like I always do um, because I know there's a lot of folks out there who are on their own on Christmas Day. Like I am, to be honest with you. I've been invited by, um, by um, you know, my sister and all that sort of thing, but. Um, the problem is, is uh, positions. Position warning. It's always, uh, I mean, I love my freight. Trust me, I've, I've, put, I've put feelers out for Liège, folks, you know. Um, the fella that actually runs Liège was the guy that was actually running um, the freight hub at uh, Munich. Um, great guy. Um, really, uh, 
very welcoming to us, uh, but obviously he's just a very busy guy at the moment, and it's very difficult to um, to get them to uh, commit to anything. I'd love to do another show. The only the only thing is with air show with 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 air side shows is obviously that you know you're sort of like um, you've got to do everything in in their in their in their on their terms in terms of like you know how long you can be air side and you know I want to be out there for like five or six hours when they've got like you know um, a lot shorter time. Gordon Freeman has just gifted a membership. Thank you, Gordon. Very kind of you. And somebody else has just gone another one. Uh, Robert uh, Ormsted has gifted a membership. Sorry, folks, if I'm. Uh, uh, we've got this. Um, Griffin Claw. Griffin Claw has gifted a membership. Thank you, Griffin Claw. Uh, Aidan Campbell, EK29, is number one on Flight Radar 24. Um, big shout out to anyone uh, from Flight Radar 24 who might be watching us at the moment. We do know they tune in. Sometimes I have to say, yes, I am doing a show on Christmas Day, folks. <laughs> really? Just, just put a post up at the top or something. Really? Oh. Bleeding folk to fire up, mate. Sorry, folks, sorry. Oh, what? 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 No. Joanna B. Him, he, me, haps.
Yeah, look, look, look. Wheel replacement going on. So it was the middle, the left middle tyre that was deflated on the uh, starboard right hand side of the jet. So port side mid set. You can see the engineer there in, all, in the all white overalls. All right. Look at that. So they are now offering up the um, the replacement. Either they're either offering up or taking it off. It might be a little bit difficult to get. You see the uh, implement that they're using there to align it. Because obviously, you know, if the um, if the assembly itself is ever so slightly damaged in any way, whilst the um, you know the 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 the, um, the bolt system is uh, damaged in any way, uh, whilst the uh, whilst the while it's rotating, because obviously they couldn't isolate that wheel, like I said, in any way. Um, so you know, if it's um, it's undergone some pretty hefty forces during its rotation period. Now whether they're um, whether they're removing that or um, or they've managed to get the new one on, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it's kicking it on there, isn't it? See you mate. Take care. Nice to see you. It is a relatively straightforward thing because it's not like, you know, even though they're manhandling it there, folks, it's on a trolley. It's on a, you know, like, you know, a, a, um, it's on a trolley, isn't it? Uh, like like a um, um, old school type trolley. Yeah, they're definitely pushing that on there, aren't they? I wouldn't be happy pushing that on there. Um, you wouldn't be forcing something like that on. It should go on there nice and easy. It shouldn't need to be. You know, they need to lift it, jack it up ever so slightly, and then uh, and then offer it on rather than sort of like you know trying to force it on um, passengers are still are not on there no Rachel no, they've disembarked many uh, moons ago in fact I think you can see the tr the trolley uh, the, 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 the the to the left what they used to call the they used to carry your barrels of beer on them and stuff like that. Dave Beeler, they weigh more than 500 pounds of tyre and wheel assembly, yeah. Which is why, you you know, kicking it and kneeing it on there is not sort of like a very, sort of like, you know, um, it's, it's a very recommended thing to do, I would
you know, like, you know, yeah, you, you see the... You see, <laughs> Joanna B, no, definitely not going to go under the, uh, make the top 10 in the um, pit stops of 2023. <laughs> Use the old air gun. <laughs> uh, Claire Bear, they won't have to change the opposite tyre, no they will not. They will have obviously inspected all the other um, systems to make sure that there was no damage. Hey! Must have gone out miles out then. Must have gone around in, in the clouds then. Oh yeah, yeah, it was way above me. Sorry folks, I did miss a, if I missed the go around, it was certainly not something that I've seen because I'm looking behind me all the time. I did notice that there was a big... I didn't even hear anything, to be honest with you. saying that apparently you do have to change the opposite uh, tyre um, of a flat. If one is flat, the opposite one has to be changed out. First I've heard of it. set of tyres because of the way that the uh, the undercarriage is, is, is angled 
the rear set will touch first the mid set will come down then and then, and then of course the um the, uh, the, the forward set will take a, a lot of the, the weight. It's very evenly distributed, I must say. So, quite surprised that um, they have to uh, they have to do that. Nigel Gale, Swiss 220, uh, 300 from Geneva, two minutes. Yeah, not having a lot of luck with that, are they? It definitely doesn't want to go on there. Of course, it has, um, it has, you know, the normal um, guide pins to guide the wheel or the the um, the rim system on, uh, and that's normally, like I say, something that's done well. It's on the trolley still, so that so that it's easier to sort of like slide it on either way either way is a little bit of hey look look look, look who it isn't look at who isn't Julie ha 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 hey might have to do that as a thumb So rare to see, man. It's like a, it's like, it's like looking out for a, um, for a rare species of, you know, water buffalo or something, and you, you see it very rarely indeed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just been taken out for a little stroll. Look, there he goes. Won't be seen for another six months now. There's his mate. Look. <laughs> and of course you wonder you know they don't have to jack the whole aircraft up they only the the, the aircraft systems are very uh, sophisticated in terms of the fact that you can only have to jack that particular um, midsection up as well so it's not like you know they have to jack the whole aircraft up it's just that um, it gets it, it's managed to isolate that particular wheel and um, and jack it from the middle of the uh, there are jacking points obviously
sun is shining in the sky There ain't a cloud in sight It stopped raining, everybody's in the play And don't you know, it's so beautiful today Hey, hey, that's <laughs> not, is it? Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why You had to hide away for so long, so long between these two, look. Is that the go around gym? Is that the go around gym? Chase the opposite way. Well, like I say, Dave, isn't isn't the isn't the each wheel independent when it's jacked up? In other words, when they jack that wheel up to change that wheel, it doesn't mean that the opposite side is also um, elevated enough to uh, to change the wheel. I don't know. reversal action. Um, is that our friends from the um, police uh, constabulary giving me a thumbs up? Always nice to know they're around, folks. Always nice to know they're around. Wow. Can even get a cruiser's chilly. Look at this. Oh, I missed him. It's only a little 320. It's only a little 320. VA, yes. Kevo 812 should be on separate hydraulic. I think it is, you know. I'm pretty sure that each wheel is um, is independent of, uh, in order, that's the whole reason why it's easy for them to change, to switch out a wheel, um, because uh, each, you know, they have to jack the whole bleeding aircraft up. Daryl, was it? Oh, okay, yeah, fair play, fair enough. Ha <laughs> ha! Good old Daryl. Yeah, Daryl, we'll do what we can. Um, looks like they got that on there. They're going around the other side and doing the other one. Got the, um, that's the old service vehicle. Horvat tuning in from Anaheim, California. Home of the 
Los Angeles Lakers, isn't it? Oh no, that's in LA, isn't it? It's actually in LA, isn't it? Lion? I've got a lion in there? <laughs> Come on, here he comes up! Meow! <laughs> very, very noisy uh, down there um, underneath that aeroplane. Generally, airside is an extremely noisy environment. APUs going shh, shh, all that stuff going on, and um, you know, planes taking off and departing, and planes stopping, and reverses, and um, doot, doot, going on, and all that. Joanna B, um, 200 psi, Joanna. Um, 200 pounds per square inch um, of um, nitrogen. It's not air. It's not oxygen. It's not air. It's um, it's nitrogen. The reason for that is because of the uh, properties of nitrogen are um, non-corrosive but also non-explosive. Um, these tyres have a uh, a slow release valve system, so that if uh, an aircraft was to um, explode, well, uh, be punctured, so to speak. Um, it's, it deflates slowly. There are um, systems on it to allow it to deflate slowly. We don't need you any more rain or not. It's nice that there isn't any. What are you doing over there? Hey! He's a big lad. He's on toe, isn't he? I gave Griffin Claw a shout, didn't I? For his memberships. Thank you, Griffin Claw. Thank you, anybody who's gifted memberships today. Very much appreciate it. Uh, Mirrors Saudi, a triple seven second out. Interesting, Saudi 777, is it the new livery? Um, they do have one in the new, no. TCC, definitely not cap one conditions now, no. Oh, hello! <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> that was quite funny. Emergency, folks! Hold it right there, ship shit. Oh, the go around. Deborah Davies, uh, 787 go around after the Saudi 777. Okay, so uh, interesting. So uh, obviously, um, maybe something came up on the uh, on the panel on that 787, um, which was a reason for the go around. Possibly. Oh, 
are beautiful ribbons being pulled by this 777 man. Oh yeah, baby. Oh. Okay, right hand brake problem for BA 86, did you say, GP? BA 36. Wow. From Shanghai, um, and it is a, a right side gear problem, did you say? Uh, sorry, a brake problem. So there's a brake issue on this 787. So obviously now, this time, we've got a, a much clearer uh, conditions. So we should be able to um, follow this one a little bit better. They're leaving big separation for this Dreamliner by the looks of it. Hey! Possible thumbnail, though. Bear that in mind, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For that Saudi triple, if we can, if you can find a, a spot, if you can find a spot. Okay, right side brake issue with this 787, apparently, folks. Electrical braking systems, by the way, they are not hydraulically operated. They are electrically operated. The brake systems on the Dreamliner, apparently. Uh, optional it's available with um brake fans but that wouldn't be applicable um right now it's only the brake fans are only activated when they uh, after they've landed normally I don't think they can change the brake bias on jets, but, uh, you know, more left than right. Oh, that fella's been uh, busy today, hasn't he? That, uh... Okay, so they are. So we've gone from um, insane rain to uh, serious sun now. Okay. <laughs> Busy old day for the um, security teams and uh, police, and fire, and emergency services. Looks like everything's all right. I'll probably stop uh, just to give that a visual. I don't know if British Airways use um, um, cooling fans on their brake systems uh, it is an option available apparently on the uh, Boeing 787 
Oh, do, 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 do what? George Tarot is next on two seven right. Wow, it looks like it's hanging in the air, man. Look at this. Who's that there? Better World Livery Neo is 40 minutes out. The I don't quite know 100% what it's about. That's the remote stand that Virgin sometimes buys. Ethan Main, you're absolutely right. Switch over is always at three o'clock. We can literally uh, be throw our so the ball with it. You can literally time your watch by it, or even set your watch by it, should I say? Comes, look, the digital plane. Come on, son, get it down. There you go. Kitty! Fluffy tail there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that's... Uh... Are you able to deactivate the brakes, possibly? Uh, that's why they gave it a load of... Um, a load of reverser. Um, on that 787 just to um, uh, take the pressure off the braking system I guess well brake failure potentially didn't it? I mean whether it was again a faulty sensor um, sometimes you don't, never know these things it's uh, Avro Arrow got it to number three Vicky Denning Gordon Freeman, Chris Clark, Diane 78, she's got to number two, all the people around the world are like, what are they looking at that, oh, what's, what's going on with that Taron, uh, 318 at Heathrow, oh, what's going on there, <laughs> nosy people, is it?
Is that is that right? Can pilots do that? Can TCC say they can um, they can apply pro braking pressure left and right independently on their on their on their feet? Obviously, you know. Big shout out to Captain Jamil on the Royal Jordanian jet inbound. Okay, we're going to get him apparently. Where? How far out? Oh, was that maybe? Maybe that was it. I just caught in the hole. SCH 737 has gifted five memberships. Thank you, sir or madam. Uh, look at that. The um, doors of the um, XBA hangar are now being opened uh, as a 767 is being worked on. Either that or they're about to um, push her out. Oh, you've got some access steps there, isn't it? No, I think that's in the foreground. Peter John, Pete Johnson, sorry, Royal, jo Royal Jordanian, six minutes out. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, Gary hates to fly. He's a brand new member. Welcome, Gary. You shouldn't do, my friend. You should be um, embracing flying. But, uh, you know, many people on this channel have obviously... Um, were once uh, afraid of flying, have now overcome their fear of flying, believe it or not, through watching the channel, which is very humbling, I have to say. Whether that's because of me, or because of us, or because of watching the, the aircraft and how... Um, Daryl Nichols has gifted a membership as well, thank you, Daryl. left uh, my other half's son is on I think uh, on my other half sorry my other half sorry is on BA triple seven about to take off to Bahrain um, is that um, has he left is he gone can you see him there GP Josh Owen loving being a member well, mate. Of course you can, in a bit mate, you, you take, take one now if you like. Oh he's going up now is he? Oh mate, there he is.
thank you. Is that your coffee cup there, fella? Oh, yeah, sorry. Good man. That's the um, Dreamliner second out, isn't it? Third out. In the middle of that stack, that Royal Jordanian jet. Very nicely done. Our friends at Aer Lingus. shouldn't it? Jim Young's in the house. Good day to you, Jim. Here we go. What's his name? But uh, Captain Captain Jamil, ladies and gentlemen. I remember it was actually a Royal Jordanian captain who once said about the um, the the dance of the ailerons on the uh, A380s outboard triple set of um, ailerons, and he uh, he called it the dance of the ailerons. I think it's something that's commonly the fraternity but um, it was a Royal Jordanian pilot who told us I don't think it was him but um, it may well have been you know Birmingham folks. 
So he's just made a big, is he making a big left turn there or uh, he is, isn't he? He's still turning, man. Wow. Thought we, I, I wouldn't have expect to see it um, at this angle uh, from here, to be honest with you. Yeah. likely I would have thought. Digital David mentioning the uh, the zoom yeah it's an incredible camera folks you know such a workhorse as well man you know well over two years on the tripod on the sticks now this uh, this camera It sag. Chris Hart giving a shout out. Thank you for the membership. Thanks for the membership. Jonathan's bass is definitely working. Ben Lav just flew over him in Leamington Spa. Cool. Fair retro jet in the mold right now, is it?
good hundred yards away and all. Monster. Absolute monster. Oh, we're not going to get the cafe jumbo on this side. Until you've gone all um, off out of range and stuff. Now you're going to see a, a jet approaching from the left to join the stack. BA268, um, 380, 25 minutes out. Stephen Callahan saying so. Fully established. That's now on uh, ATC approach. Final checks. Flaps now being. Um, yeah, look at that one coming up here. Gear coming down. I don't know if you're trying to talk to me, Jilly, but you might have to call back because I've just got I've just got No, you're all robotic, mate, you're all robotic, fully robotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just call me back because it's it's hurting my ears as well. Uh, Squopy, um, Squopy, it really does all depend on the. It's all down to pilots' discrepancy. How when they extend the landing gear. Um, you know, it's part of their procedures and it's, it, it is, like I say, literally down to the pilots. Could be seven miles out, could be four miles out. Um, you know, it really does depend on, on, on what they're used to doing. Um, but, um, and in terms of height, again, it is, um, it is one of those things that's, um, uh, it's height and distance and everything you know that in between that is uh, dependent on the um, I mean that one that one that's um, following in on the back of that triple by the looks of it he's over Fulham now um, still at 3,200 feet so gear being extended at about 3,000 feet Like I say, it does all depend on the um, on the on the uh, on the pilots. Of course, um, Jan Kachko has gifted a membership. Thanks, Jan. Um, it, it's uh, like that's an Iran air jet. That second one that you're looking at there, um, and um, you know because they're not able to fuel, they're not able to fuel um, in Europe. 
uh, they may extend their gear a little bit later because obviously the um, the uh, undercarriage uh, extending the undercarriage creates quite a lot of drag wow that Swiss 320s sitting there already waiting to go out uh, they're starting to line up already on the uh, 27 right departures passing through all the different moisture layers now creating that um, pressures over the wing there as they um, as they should get some I will use minimal reverser action. Set Trent 700s on him. Bit of aero break. Get the uh, reversers open now. Tiny little bit of reverser. Everything else on the brakes and the uh, ground spoilers, which are highly efficient. Set of tankers, awesome light. 
Patrick Gordon from Big Toe. Back shots rule Avro Arrow. First of four more, if you see what I mean. Yeah, starting to line up now. Don't have a new camera, GG. Same old camera. Son, get with it. That's like a jumbo jet. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> you do get excited, didn't you, Jerry? Eh? Your old mince pies should have gone to spec savers, son. <laughs> Looks like a jumbo jet. Well, it does when you're looking at it with your. Bleeding idiot. Stupid car. Permission to speak, sir. What is it, Jerry? You said it was a jumbo, sir. It's a free night here, so I know, Joe. Should have gone to Specsavers, sir. Uh, David Edwards, we are we are off to hell. I'm um, I'm leaving for hell on Tuesday. Um, possibly get a little pre-show in for you guys as well. I'll be the opportunity actually to do the free view on Tuesday afternoon slash evening-ish, and then we can get that out of the way, and then um, go, go all free. Mem all members, by the way, uh, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, folks, from Helsinki. Away while the runway's still warm. No, mate, you're joking, aren't you? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's brilliant.
No Eve, I'm not taking my thermals, gonna take a pair of speedos and me flip-flops and a t-shirt. Go cool. Bennett! Listen to that Eddie had 380 going out. Going to hell and back. Oh, yeah. Sammy. <coughs> Excuse me. Possible funky shot coming up. Possible funky shot coming up. Moustache. 
Okay, first of the big ones, here we go. funky shot. Come on, mate. We had a good day. Take care, man. Be safe. Look at that for a little mini A350, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't she a beautiful aeroplane, the A220? Looking very sleek there. All looks in proportion, doesn't it, the A220? Engine size. He's an artist! Load of rudder, man. Gonna tricks.
more Rolls Royce power. Yes, they are short haul penny. Um, they are not planning on um, making a long range variant because obviously, being as it's an Airbus aircraft, uh, the 321 is taking care of that. There was talk of a, another variant of the 220, um, but whether it was slated for uh, for. for for medium haul, I'm not sure. Smoky old engine on that uh, number two, wasn't it? this just very quickly. Wow, this is very D-rated.
He looks a little bit angry, that triple seven there, doesn't it? <clears throat> Bob Fleming here. alignment radar. See that quite a lot <coughs> on the old BA jets. I think they've got a bit of a dodgy batch of radomes. Ziggy Stardust. Who's that? Oh! Well, it's not going to make any... It's not going to be good if he's on the right side, is it? Unless, of course, he's... When he's hurtling down the runway, yeah. We have to know, I have to know exactly where he's sitting on the plane. Nobody in BA Engineering has OCD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would be, uh, yeah, good point. It certainly appears that way, doesn't it? Hey, hey! Gethin, I know what you're saying, but Gethin, if you flew on a triple seven, a 27-year-old triple seven, and closed your eyes um, uh, when you were sort of like um, once you were at cruising altitude, 
really you don't know the difference if you're in a relatively comfortable seat same for like for like seat you know see this guy um, you don't really notice a great deal of difference I've got to be honest with you and I've, um, I've flown the 350 quite a few times and flown the 777 and in comparison other than obviously uh, the smell of a brand new aircraft or uh, or the feel of a brand new seat uh, in terms of the sound from the engines it's very much uh, very much the same XWB's or uh, even his uh, gear extension for quite some time this uh, 380 isn't he Two thousand eight hundred feet. Just coming up to Richmond now. Looking left at the uh, Twickenham Stadium. Twickenham Stadium. Two thousand five hundred feet. thousand four hundred feet here it comes wing gear first body gear second drops backwards that looks like it's having a baby every time it gives birth to the uh, to the body gear Gear fully extended at 2,000 feet. XWB time. with it gonna get funky with it
What's that? What's that, mate? <laughs> Bless him. Oh, we've got a road. Interesting. Dem lights. We'll come back to that in a second, folks. Just want to get this. And you'll start. It's the other thing that these uh, electric start engines, no uh, hydraulics, uh, not, not an air starter <coughs> like a traditional engine start system using air starters, it will um, use electronic systems to, uh, to turn the N1. Uh, different uh, procedures, different uh, operational um, procedures for the uh, for the start of these engines. Oh, it is! It is! It is! Ladies and gentlemen, the Singapore Slinger is coming rogue. Ha ha ha! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. He 
did, and he turned his light, he turned his taxi light off. Um, to look at. Oh, look at the misting on that man. Very happy check himself now. Good old Canadian hospitality. Jumper, way ahead of the slip. Plukners, Plukners, Plukners. Uh, welcome, Plukners, to Big Jet TV. Apologies. I know, I'm, I'm trying to pronounce it, Pluk. Plugness. I think there might be a typo there, I don't know, but uh, anyway, Plugness, very warm welcome to you. You can remember that you, uh, your memory will be that you joined as a Cafe Pacific 747-8, or should I say, sorry, Cafe Cargo um, 747-8. Don't call it Cafe Pacific Cargo anymore, do we, even though... Um, this might be one of the ones that hasn't yet been uh, rebranded. May still say Cafe Pacific Cargo. Super Freighter. No, it is Cafe Pacific Cargo, yeah. wide the rake is on the uh, 350's undercarriage. We would have been able to see it if it hadn't been for, uh, for that jet, but um, compared to the 777, very tight the 777 compared to the 350. Oh, not a typo. Okay, cool. Okay, so plucking us. Oh, we'll just call him planes, shall we? Okay, well, it's easier for me, innit? Thank you, planes, and a very warm welcome to you. Jimmy, James Wertel, yes, indeed. GENX on all 747 
Dash 8 freighters and, um, and passenger jets as well. Well, what a treat this is, ladies and gents. Of uh, power on the uh, on the engines, you can see the little soot trails of soot coming out of the engines as they uh, increase the um, just small incremental um, power increases just to keep the aircraft at the right speed. Gnarly was that. Three, Fourteen hours later, Emma right, right, right. Squirrel! Rich S. Reagan Farmer. Uh, Otto Yankers. I think it's Otto Yankers, is it? Uh, Boom, like. Alex Hilton, Jaden, Max, Steve Stimmons, Chris Clark. <coughs> wow. Okay, you want to see a rocket? Oh, I've got a rocket. Oh, you're going on it. has gifted a membership. Okay, here we go. Light the blue touch paper and stand well back. Steep enough in it. Um, of course, it's a standard old school column on the um, on the A300. It's not a side stick. Thank you, Max. thousand two hundred and twenty four feet per minute That's decent enough for him. You 
got it, JP Crass. Nice, got a triple seven on Rogue, folks. Darren Nichols, I remember when Air France sent their A300s here. Oh, back in the old days, back in the 80s. Would that be the 80s? Pete, some guy, thank you very much indeed, uh, saying massive thank you for you and Jerry for providing such great shows over the years. I celebrated my fourth year last Saturday. They helped manage my mental health great. Yeah, well, we get a lot of that, I have to say, folks. Oh, look at this shot, look, look, look at this shot, look at this. It's the holiday programme, isn't it? That, that could be a contender as well, Jilly. Yeah, that could be a contender. That could be a contender. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Look at, look, look at the options, look at the options. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really like to do that, do we? <laughs> I think the 380, I think the Singapore swing are touching down. Stephen Rendell, welcome to Big Jet TV, Stephen. As a brand spanking new homegrown um, member.
about it. Oh! Landing Rogue, yeah. Two number four, please. Pilot set, and she's on her way. Nearly done, folks. Don't forget, this coming Wednesday we will be in Helsinki. I'm going to Helen back this week. Yes, 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 yeah, okay. Well, we'll get him going out. Uh, what, what time's he going out? Is he going out? Oh, okay. Roxy Simmons, bit of a uh, bumpy ascent. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Direct headwind, so, you know, um, it's kind of what you want, but... Um, it's blustery, put it that way. Uh. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not off to Arnhem back. <laughs> not much going on there. wonderful members supporting us here on the channel and not just supporting us but also supporting your fellow members as well um, uh, new subscribers you are more than welcome if you are newly subscribed to the channel make sure you hit your notifications uh, bell as well to make sure you turn on your notifications because we don't want you missing any um, notifications funny enough um, live twice a week Wednesdays and Sundays, the usual. Uh, we are overseas um, at least twice a month. European and uh, international shows. Um, and uh, next week, this coming Wednesday, all new members will be able to join us in Helsinki. Um, hoping to get some de-icing action. That's the main thing I'm looking out for. Uh, but also, Solai, seeing as it's Christmas time, a little bit of a wintry wonderland environment. Max, safe trip to hell. <laughs> Brilliant.
track 44 there will be de-icing for sure. Oh, look at it, did it, wow. Okay, this Raining at the leash, ready to go. He definitely was on. He was was on earlier on, I think. Oh, guy in '78. That's a lofty seven, a triple seven freighter. Cool. Turn up, Trent. show that we've had two emergencies um, in one show oh yeah They see you in hell. Right, folks, thank you so much. It has been um, wet, cold, blustery, but we made it. We made it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, it's been great. Thanks for your patience. Thank you to everybody for. Uh, for, for watching and joining in and getting involved in the chat, really appreciate your uh, your involvement, and uh, we will uh, we will see you in hell.